audio test. All right. All right, good evening everyone. My name is Phil Gallagher of Thraben University and tonight I'm going to be streaming a little bit with Red White Death and Taxes. Uh, to be honest, I'm pretty exhausted right now. Uh, it was a parent-teacher conference day, so I kind of worked two hours later than I normally do. Um, so tonight's stream probably won't be particularly long. I'll probably do a couple matches here um, and then finish up whatever I don't do tonight on uh, Wednesday. Um, this is my regularly scheduled stream time. Minus an hour. Um, I wanted to go ahead and just kind of knock it out um, and like make sure I got some streaming in before I get too tired. Um, I also had a, uh, an anime convention this weekend and I presented six different panels, so I just want to make sure I get some games in before I get pooped. Uh, don't want to get rusty. Um, the win percentage with Direfleet Daredevil has been kind of flirting with the 60% the uh, threshold. I went 3-2 in something like four leagues in a row, and then the last league I went 2-3. Um, so we'll see how we do this time around. Hey man, happy to finally see you on Twitch. Been reading Thraben University since you started it. Well, glad to finally catch you here. Um, welcome, and uh, I'm glad you've been enjoying my content. Um, so the list tonight, uh, the main deck is identical to what I've been playing for a while. We're, we're trying out two Dire Fleet Daredevils. Um, and, you know, just in case you haven't been here before, um, this card is a, a 2-1 with first strike for one and a red, and it's sort of like a reverse Snapcaster Rage. When it enters the battlefield, you exile an instant or sorcery from your opponent's graveyard, and then you can cast that card this turn, spending your mana as though it were mana of any color. And if it would go into the uh, graveyard instead, you go ahead and exile it. Uh, so this enables a lot of weird plays where you get to do things like Brainstorm, Ponder, Him to Torak, Abrupt Decay that you normally can't do. Uh, most of the sideboard is pretty stock, uh, with the exception of this one of Restoration Angel that we're trying out. Uh, the chat convinced me to try it last time, and I never actually got to cast it. Um, so we'll keep it in the deck for another go, because it's it's sort of a fun card. And really, it does do a lot of things that the deck wants to do. Like, it's another flyer, but it's a flyer that only has one white symbol in it. It has good synergy with, like, P&K, Palace, Jailer, Flicker, Whispertruder, Stoneforge, Daredevil... Uh, and even things like Revoker and Sanctum Prelate and Relic Order can be reset with it. Um, so I think this is a reasonable card for a lot of the mid-range decks of the format. Hello, hello, Scudo. Welcome. Uh, we're just getting ready to sort of go in. Uh, I'm going to run back the same build we had last time and see how that goes. To do Get rid of that. Move those around. Okay. Um, a lot of people have been experimenting with Dire Fleet Daredevil, and the opinions on the card are very, very mixed. Like there are some times that it wins you games that no other card in your deck could win you. And then there's other times where it's a 2-1 on the first strike, and you don't even get to cast anything. Um, like, so, sometimes you'll get paired against something like Eldrazi, where realistically in a game they won't even put a target in. Um, and then Dire Fleet Daredevil is a 2-1 with first strike that's a little bit hard to cast. But then there are other times where you get to do, like, absurd things, like, you know, bolt your opponent, or duress your opponent, like, that you normally just can't do. So it sort of functions as pseudo-graveyard hate and sort of a, a decent value card, uh, mostly against the fair decks of the format. So it has some tension with Thalia, because making the spells cost extra is bad, and it also has tension with Rest in Peace, so it's not like the card is just free. Alright, one the roll versus what do we have? Vedex. Looks like my opponent was last seen on Miracles in a Legacy Challenge just a few days ago, so it's probably Miracles. I'm going to ask what my record is. Um, 
This hand is not very good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just, like, mulligan this. Like, if my opponent is actually on Miracles, this hand is unplayable. Uh, my opponent says I'm 4-0 and don't want to finish the league. Would you like to split? Um, I'm going to decline my opponent's request. Um, I, I don't know this player, so I don't uh, really want to split with them when there aren't ways built into Moto to do that. And this this is a uh, a reasonable hand. I'll go ahead and keep this. I'll bottom a flicker wisp. running out the second Thalia here rather than waiting to play it with Caracas because I think the chance that my opponent naturally has a second sword to plowshares is pretty low. Yeah. Super, super shame I scried that flicker wisp to the bottom. It would have been pretty insane here. Think it's going to require weeks to properly evaluate Direfully Daredevil? I agree with that. Like, there's a a lot to think about with a card like that. And I'm not just going to give up my Thalia here. If my opponent wants to like pop pop the EE to like make me get rid of it. That's fine. I'll just bounce it. And now if I draw another land, I'll cast P and K with Caracas back up, and that's pretty insane. Alright, you have a search. That's fine. Ooh, but my opponent does not have another land drop. So that's great. Um, knowing that my opponent has missed a land drop, I'm going to go ahead and deploy Thalia here. I don't think I want to tap this Caracas to have them, like, potentially... They haven't had any any cantrip yet to have the ability to set up a terminus. So like they would get two looks for a terminus with search for Ascanta if I tap out for a Stoneforge here, which is not an insignificant number. Like it's not a ton. Um, but I'd really like to put more pressure on my opponent than just two damage a turn. Since I have the P and K and the Mom both, I think I'm going to go ahead and commit a Stoneforge to the board. Um, Alright, well I got a Jace for my efforts there, uh, which I accept. Alright, that's really annoying.
do I want to attack in with this mom? That is a real question at this point. Um, I'm not in a good position in this game now. My opponent essentially got like a... It's not a 3 for 1 because my opponent lost their only white source too. Um, kind of keeping that in mind, in order for a mom attack to be punished, my opponent would have to have like white source land and swords to plowshares or snapcaster mage. Um, pushing a couple of points of damage with mom could be extremely relevant. And if this game goes a little bit longer, like my opponent is going to flip this search for Escanta. So they have three, six cards in the graveyard right now. So if they scry one in, they can go ahead and just flip this and then they get an additional piece of mana acceleration that they can use once. So they might actually just keep it as a like scry thing and try to dig for a terminus. And I think if terminus is what I'm scared of at this point, I should go ahead and just crash in with the mom. Like, my opponent doesn't even guarantee to have a Swords to Plowshares. Uh, this is a little bit risky, but I think the risky line is a good line this game. And I'm going to go ahead and thin my deck and get a basic here. targeting themselves. So they now have a white source. I may become less likely to go ahead and just attack in with this Mother of Runes from here on out. It's going to depend. Oh, they shuffle. Alright, so they've shuffled. They don't have a removal spell, like a Swords to Plowshares right now, unless they just drew it off the portent. So I think I do just want to like keep attacking with this Mother of Runes, as weird as that is. Although, if they have Snapcaster Mage, then attacking with it is bad. Um, in that I lose the Thalia, not that like the Mom itself is particularly relevant. So it's a, it's a four turn clock if I attack with both. It is a three turn clock if I attack with mom. And after an attack after one of these attacks twice, my opponent can't actually use a fetch land anymore. Like four turns is a lot of time and my opponent can do more with their resources than I can. I'm gonna I'm gonna send them both in. Oh well they they pitched a Jace. Horton targeting themselves. Uh, Alright, that's bad. Ooh, 
Really glad I made the mom attack. Alright, Flicker Wisp. That's not bad. I know this doesn't, like, leave me the ability to go and cast swords to plowshares, but I'd rather have the opportunity to get this PNK uncounterable with another red source. Second Terminus. It's rude. Okay, um, again, I'm going to leave myself the opportunity to cast PNK uncounterable and expose this Dahlia to a counterspell, like so. So they just junked a force of will. Alright, and they have a counterbalance. Don't care about that. Alright, they have a source of plowshares on top. This is actually quite nice, because they'll draw the swords of plowshares, all attack in with Flicker Wisp, they'll remove it, and then I will like slam down this PNK, which is lethal. Um, does Dire Fleet Daredevil do anything better than PNK? I don't think so. Yeah, build your own double red off of two different Flicker Wisps. Uh, so this is actually kind of useful for me. Like, my opponent gets to, like, take a look with Search for Ezkanta, but, like, now that card is dead. So, like, if they have, like, yet another Terminus and they get rid of P and K, that's kind of annoying. But, like, it is Terminus or Bust. Like, that is their only out here. Okay, um, so they can make two Angels. Or three angels. That's actually not that scary. Like again, any any fetch land, like so, just represents damage. So now my opponent actually can't attack with any of these angels, or I get to just like potentially burn them out. Um, I may or may not actually swords any of these angels. I'm going to reserve judgment on that. Like, I guess I could, like, Dire Fleet Daredevil and, like, Ponder or something like that, but I think I'm likely to, like, lose something to that counterbalance if I do so.
I just want to fetch before I go and do anything else. Sure. Source the plowshares targeting P and K. So I can shoot them down to one in response so they can never fetch again. Or I can save my red source to like Dire Fleet Daredevil and cast another spell. Putting them to one isn't that great if I can't like deal with the angel army. So I think I'd rather swords to plowshares in response, bring them up to seven. They'll attack in for one with one angel. I'll swords to plowshares another angel, and then I just have to deal with one more angel. I had a brainstorm on top. All right, unfortunate. So I'm going to go ahead and wasteland my opponent's flooded strand. They'll probably fetch in response. Nope, oh, nope, they let it go. Uh, which is fine. So since they let that go, I will go ahead and just pass my turn at this point. And then on the following turn, I will play Dire Fleet Daredevil. I'm not entirely sure that my opponent getting one card with an, an Escanta Activation is any better than just keeping a Scry Machine. All right, a brainstorm. They brainstorm. They reveal another search for Escanta, which I guess is fine because I can use this opportunity to get rid of one of those idiots. Let's see if I can resolve this. Doesn't look like it. And unexpectedly absent. And we will lose to that card pretty much no matter what I do. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and concede that at this point for the sake of clock. Back to basics is really annoying uh, for the red-white build, whereas like it is a non-issue for the mono-white build. So 
playing against FedEx. Game one, lost uh, back to basics. All right, uh, so we'll bring in all of our things that are annoying against miracles. Um, would consider Leon a relic order. It looks like my opponent is really heavy on uh, uh, search for Iskanta. So I'll board Swords to Plowshares out. I'll board Magus of the Moon out. It's not particularly good against what they've got going on. Um, my opponent may or may not have mentors. Uh, doesn't look like they do in the main deck based on the way their build is, but they might in the sideboard. Uh, if they don't, Jailer is great. If they do, Jailer is not so great. So I have to ask myself whether I'd rather have a Relic Order or a Jailer. Um, and that's close. The Relic Order can get rid of the EEs that I saw. It can get rid of Search for Escanta and Back to Basics as well. Like, since my opponent's a Back to Basics deck, like that might be worth having in here over the Jailer. So that seems reasonable. Nolrod is being talked about by Miracles players on the source. I think Nolrod is a great sideboard card for that deck. Like, Nolrod is amazing in any deck that can support Nolrod. Uh, like, it, it does so much work against death decks like Death and Taxes while randomly hosing other decks that you'll come across. Like, on those off times where you play against, like, Mud or the random, like, pseudo-affinity deck that's running around, uh, it, it, it is very good. Hey, thank you so much for, for subscribing. Like, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, that's the sort of stuff that helps to, to, like, drive me to make more content and to, like, stream at regular hours. Uh, so, I, Proto7, thank you very much for joining the Cult of Thalia and supporting Thraven University. Praise be. Uh, this hand looks great. Like, on the surface, it's a little soft to back to basics, but since we have this layer in relic order, uh, we can punch a hole in that if that happens. Oh, we totally are a cult. Disenchant my vial, will you? I think not. So on the off chance that like this just cripples my opponent and takes them out of the game, I'm gonna go ahead and wasteland that tundra. And just kinda sit back for a turn. I'm not just gonna deploy the Leon and Relic Warder as a bear yet. putting my opponent into kind of a weird spot in terms of their mana usage where they have to decide whether or not they're willing to leave up this planes. If they don't leave up the planes, I can equip a sword on mom and just crash in there. And then if my opponent uses a removal spell on the mom, I don't particularly care. Um, do I want to go for broke and just, like, jam? Kind of want to just jam, and then if my opponent has it, 
I'll just play another mob. My opponent has already used a disenchant and a source of plowshares from their initial hand, so I felt like they didn't have it. Like, I think I'm more likely to see something like a terminus right here. Yeah, there we go. So now I'll uncounterable P and K with Caracas back up, which is sweet. Uh, and I actually can put this on Artif... Uh, no, I'll put it on Human. That's annoying. All right, that's kind of disgusting. So, I have to decide when I want to cast this. I can just cast it now so that my opponent can't counterspell it or anything like that, which I think I want to do. And then on my following turn, I can put Sword of Fire and Ice on it. And then I'm bigger than the idiots. Yes, I want to use Restoration Angel's ability. Um, and at this point, I don't think there's any need for me to commit any other cards to the board. My opponent is kind of really hoping for a Terminus at this point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and expose P and K to a removal spell, because my opponent has plenty of worries right now. I guess I can attack with all of these, and then no matter what, two bodies get through, and when they do, I can just fling at my opponent. I should have played my Wasteland pre-combat if that was my plan, though. Um, we'll ship everybody in here. Okay. Swords of Plowshares on the Restoration Angel is fine. I accept that.
Okay, so I can attack in with everything. If my opponent has a removal spell, my attack doesn't work. Or I can, like, play it a little bit slower and just, like, plan on, like, either just casting P and K. Or, like, I can just cast P and K, P and, P and K hold up Caracas, or I can equip Sword on Thalia, attacking with just Thalia. Uh, most of my lines are really good. I can just sort the plowshares a land here to like act or wasteland a land. I don't actually care about any of these cards, so I will let my opponent just tap one. So where's the plowshares on a thopter? Yeah, sure, I could equip. Like, the, th the thing is that I don't actually care about any of these cards, though. So like by just making the attack, I, I force my opponent to do something about it. This one's a mulligan, it has no colored sources. This one's a keep, it's great. Um, I'll keep a Stoneforge. Uh, I'm not going to interact with the chat at all this game. Um, I'm low on clock, uh, which is sort of why I made some questionable, questionable plays in the previous game as well. I'll be fetching a basic planes with this windswept teeth to, like, since my hand is entirely mono white right now, um, to just play around there back to basics to, you know, what extent that is possible. I'll play the thing that can't get sort of supply shared this turn. There's that. I'll run the same thing back. I would really like to draw a land so that I can prelate and my opponent can't potentially terminus me.
under the assumption that my opponent is going to turn with me right here. I'm going to play a card that cantrips and get this sword into my hand. Yeah, there it is. Not great. All right, we're going aggro. I'm missing land drops. That's annoying. I think I'm going to get Terminus, so I'm going to attack both with Jace. Yeah, there it is. Annoying. Great draw, though. Uh, it's going to be slow. Uh, those are lands, but none of them are basics. I'm going to shuffle. Disenchant on the vial is rough. My opponent most certainly has something here to protect the Jace. Alright, it's a Terminus. So my opponent gets a lot of looks. Uh, yeah, okay. The unexpectedly absent will be very good. Uh, 
I honestly think my opponent probably should have cast it for more than zero, but if they have like a counterspell or something like that, they can just use that. We'll see. Or, okay, I guess I just missed saw. Uh, this is not a PNK game. So my opponent is very aggressively brainstorming, which probably means they're like they just want to find an intrigue, intrigue for a bunch and just kill me in one go, and that will work very, very well for them. So I expect this to be the Entreat the Angels. Yep. So that's for 5 Angels, which is 20. And I can't gain life with this Batter Skull. Oop, but I am at 21. Okay, not dead yet. Like, there's just literal no way I win, right? As I go up to 6 life, I take 20 more on the crackback, I can't gain any more life. Yeah. Alright. Very much not winning. Ah. So be it. So we lost game one to back to basics. So we win game two there with PNK over the course of many, many turns. And we lose game three to entreat after missing land drops. All right. So be it. Back in the queue. All right. How we doing tonight? Um, I'm really tired. I went to an anime convention this weekend. I streamed, or not streamed. I I did six different panels over the course of three day, over two days really, and then today was parent teacher conference. So I worked two hours later than I normally do. So I'm pretty wiped. So we'll play a, a couple of games and then call it a night pretty early here. Um, this is earlier than my normal stream times. You know, I normally start streaming at seven and go for two or three hours. Um, here I'll probably do about three matches and then call it a night. As far as the deck goes, um, like we had a, a relatively interesting game too, but um, uninteresting games one and three, um, largely due to back to basics. All right, we're playing against Lone Star 16. Um, who has been playing a Wii of Old deck, it looks like. Some sort of, like, Veteran Explorer, Lee of Old, Pernicious Deed, mid-range deck that's not quite big enough to really be Nick fit. Um, we mulligan this hand, it doesn't have lands. We'll keep this one, it has a vial and one land. Any restos in the sideboard? Yes, one. Thoughts on the modern pro tour? No. I don't I don't follow modern. Um Jerry Thompson did well though. Jerry Thompson's bros, so I'm happy for him. Um 
I don't really know anyone else who was in the top eight. Like, I didn't look at it that carefully. Um, I think Mangucci was in top eight. So he puts out legacy content. So good for him. And that's another land. That's great for us. In a word, it was diverse. Alright, I'm going to reset my upkeep stop before I forget about that. Reed Duke made top 8. I like Reed Duke. Reed Duke's really cool. Um, I don't think I've played against him, but like, I've... I've been around him a handful of times in person, and every time, you know, he has just seemed like the greatest guy ever. Um, when when he was playing Elves, one of my buddies was on Elves, and, like, I think they ended up, like, playing a mirror match, and he, they, they talked a lot about various, you know, pieces of advice and whatnot. All right, so my opponent gets to therapy, and... Um, like, in the dark, they probably named Thalia or Swords to Plowshares. So, like, if they named Thalia in the dark, that super sucks for me. Yep. So whatever piece of equipment I get right here probably eats it to the flashback of that therapy on the following turn. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get the Batter Skull. Like, this is the card that I care about losing the least. Like, I want the swords, I want the uh, the Sword of Fire and Ice in my deck to get through their potential blockers. Yep. Ripping a land would be awesome. I'm fetching here just to figure out what I want to get with this, this duder. I think it's just Dahlia and like try to potentially tax my opponent out. Although there's an argument for just like grabbing another stone forge, although that's not great if they have another discard spell. There's an argument for just getting a flicker wisp. I think it's Thalia. How come you don't play Modern? You can still play D&D. Yeah, I've played D&D in Modern. I've seen how that goes. That deck is terrible. Alright, it's, it's not like objectively terrible or anything, but uh, it is noticeably worse than the Legacy version, and I don't think it's a good deck in Modern. Like, in the Modern version, you're hoping that Crusader just like beats your opponent to death and they can't possibly deal with it. Um, and I don't love that. Um, there is the five-color humans deck in modern. Um, I, I would, I would consider playing something like that. This is really annoying if my opponent just has, like, veteran explorer to stonewall all my stuff. Yep. So... If I attack, my opponent blocks, we each get two lands. That brings me up to five lands. I can stone forge off two of my lands, use the other stone forge to dump in a sword and have sort of fire and ice online the following turn. I don't actually hate that. So I can attack in with Thalia and Recruiter, trade Recruiter for Veteran Explorer, and then sneak in two damage from my opponent to 16. And I actually don't think they have that much big stuff, like, based on what I see of their deck list. Like, it looks like they ha have a Thrag Tusk, a Jace, two Jaces, and two Nissas, as well as, like, two Pernicious Deeds. Um, alternatively, I can just, like, commit another card to the board. And, like, just play the Stoneforge and pass. It's 
tricky. Can I do my, my stream in Latin? Not today. I don't have nearly the brain power to do that today. Um, like if my opponent does something like just land deed and I just play out this Stoneforge, that kind of sucks for me. But I guess if my opponent has the deed already and I give them two lands, then it, like the overall situation is about the same. I'm crashing in. Like, I don't have that many flyers to break the stalemate. And I think I can make really good use of my mana. What is this? What the hell does this do? Spider. Delirium enters the battlefield. If you have delirium, make some spiders. Oh man, you're a legend? Oh, you're a legend, but there's cards in graveyard. That's super unfortunate. What the hell? Alright. So like, there's this really weird game of like, do do I want to bounce or not bounce this spider thing? And I think I want to bounce it. Ugh. If my opponent plays this spider every turn and creates a giant spider army, I'm annoyed. But like, my opponent doesn't get that far by doing all that. Especially now. So I can use Daredevil to brainstorm. So I can use Daredevil, brainstorm. If I draw a land in that process, I can go land, equip Thalia, bash in, and that all seems very nice. Alright, the second ability? No. What's it do? I can't click on that and see. Alright, I'll find out later. Tell me what the second ability does, chat. You can kill me real fast? Okay. Lose a life for each spider. Alright. So, I know I said I was kind of looking for a land, but I'm not looking for it that badly that I want to, like, legend roll my own Crocus just to equip. So, I'll put Caracas on bottom, and then put Stoneforge. Right. 
Four and a green, so if I Blood Moon, I can't actually stop them from casting that. That's super annoying. I don't actually think I want to Magus. Kind of want to do that in response to the Brainstorm now, though. But if I do that, I don't really know how it beats a spider. Alright, I guess, I guess my like long-term plan is... Alright. Yeah. Long-term plan involves Stoneforge Mystic for multiple pieces of equipment to beat the spider. So on my turn, I get to Stoneforge, shuffle away the Caracas. Get a batter skull, put in a batter skull. On the following turn, I can put a batter skull onto a dire fleet, and that's up to six power. And then we can put sort of fire and ice on as well, and then we have a billion D power of first strike. This spider's really annoying, guys. It's unfortunate that Mike, my opponent, also got to uh, like get delirium back with that ponder. All right, the Outer Skull's exiled. Wonderful. So I guess rather than put in Jitte, how much does this activate? Seven. I guess I'll start gearing up. The nice thing is that like if my opponent has something like a pernicious deed, they lose all of their spiders. How do I always get paired against like Nick Fit like Dex? What is this now? Could be anything. Green sun for x equals 4. Still could be anything. Right. Whenever a creature you control dies, you get an experience counter. At the beginning of your end step, choose target creature, card in your graveyard. If its CMC is less than or equal to the number of experience counters you have, return it to the battlefield, otherwise put it in your hand. Okay. So if I put Jitte on Dire Fleet Daredevil for 4 mana, I can swing in with 4 power of first strike, get a bunch of Jitte counters, and then lose the Dire Fleet. Keep the Jitte counters and use it for follow-up creatures, or I can just ponder. I would love to find a Swords to Plowshares. Like a source of plowshares to get rid of this would let the rest of my stuff take over the game. My kingdom for a crusader. We don't have any of those in the main deck. I don't necessarily want to like 
just start crashing in with Dire Fleet yet, so I think I want do want to ponder. Um, I will ponder with the Caracas. Palace Jailer. Alright, so it's Palace Jailer and two dead cards. If I palace if I tick my vial up on the next turn and palace jailer this weaver, I can hold the board against the rest of the stuff that they have currently. But then I have to draw two blanks in a row. Is that is that fine or do I want to try to do better? So either way that wasteland goes on bottom. And this goes after that. And then that goes there. My opponent has six bodies. I have six creatures. Alright, so six bodies assuming the spider dies. Alright, I'll take it. I need to turn off my auto yield so that I can actually tick up the vial to four. Deed is really annoying. really need the swords to plowshares because like I have to chump block this Marin and now I hope my opponent doesn't know how my cards work three four so I take four now my opponent becomes the monarch um, I'm pretty well in dead because my opponent gets their spider back. I'm going to go ahead and concede here. Alright, uh, so I'm going to bring in stuff. Uh, I'm essentially going to try to become a better mid-range deck that can use my resources better. Alright. That's probably what's coming in. What's coming out? Magus probably isn't great. I don't love Vile against the Deed deck. And I suppose I could like trim a mom and then just try to keep like a lot of good value oriented stuff in here. I 
I don't think my opponent has quite enough bodies where I also want the paths. Um, this is not an ideal opener. It has a Revoker for a Deed. It has a Flicker Wisp. Which doesn't do a ton right now. It has a Relic Order for, like, again, another Deed or something like that. It has a bunch of lands. Um, I think I'm going to keep it because my, like, I am most scared of Deed and I have an answer to that. Uh, if my opponent is, like opens on things that are soft to Wasteland, then I can really do sweet stuff in this game. Uh, but it doesn't look like that's happening. And we'll leave our basics in the deck to fetch them up uh, with my opponent's cards. What you got going on? Um, do I want to revoke this death right shaman? Not particularly. But I think I will. So, like, the thing about this play is that if my opponent taps out for a Pernicious Deed, I can just Relic Warder or Flicker Wisp my Revoker and deal with it in that capacity. So I think this is fine. Wall therapy me. So that'll aim the Sword of Fire nice. Yep. And then my opponent will probably sacrifice their Death Rite Shaman to get rid of one of my other two cards. Yep. Probably the Flicker Wisp. Maybe Relic Order if they have a Deed in hand. Yep. All right, that's solid. Uh, I have more land than I want. My opponent is on a decently fast clock. Deed. No, we have all. Ugh. Like, given the top of my deck, Leovold's actually really annoying. Like, now I can't just port my opponent into Oblivion, and, like, I know I have another land coming.
Alright, while well, Leovold isn't the best draw, it is an acceptable draw. Or, excuse me, while well, Caracas isn't the best draw, it's acceptable. Like, this at least means I can attack in with my stuff. I don't love giving... Oops. Sorry about that. I refreshed my page on my stream. Like... Yeah, I, I have that double first strike wall, so my opponent couldn't attack in. And I don't think I'm getting anywhere by sitting back, so I, I'll, let, I'll let my opponent take out the Revoker and the Stoneforge with their current resources. And... Decay on my Thalia. Okay. Annoying. Try to port my opponent off of green, but it's not going to work. So I'll be waste landing this trop in response to the Leovold. opponent knows about the relic order, so that's going bye-bye. <sighs> and I have to decide if I want to just, like, give my opponent one card and tax them three mana in exchange for two damage. I have Stone Cold nothing, so I think I have to do that and, like, try to limit what they can do with mana rather than with, like, actual resources on my end. Like, if my opponent just keeps deploying Leovold and doing nothing else with their turn, like, that's okay for me. Uh, and I'm going to fetch purely to thin, and then f6. Alright, my opponent has a Thrag Tusk. Wonderful. The good news is we can wall a Thrag Tusk. The bad, bad news is we're out of gas. Uh, now that I can't keep my opponent off of Leovold, I'm going to keep them off of Jace instead. So now that I can't aggro my opponent out, I'm going to stop bouncing the Leovold. He says, as he proceeds to bounce the Leovold. So if I, if I bounce the Leovold... I 
I can Zords the, the Thrag Tusk and then attack in, but then like the Leovold is still an issue and I just keep a, it keep beating my opponent's cards. Or I can assume that I get something better than the Thrag Tusk over the next few turns and just get rid of the Leovold instead with the Swords. And then otherwise just sit back. Like I, I take some beats from the Deathrite Shaman, but as soon as I draw like a Stoneforge or a PNK or something of that nature, I, I break free of this. I will, yeah, I, I think I do need to, like, just get rid of this Leobold. Like, it, that, that's terrible, because, like, the Crocus sort of answers it. But, like, I'm not going to beat out this Deathrite Shaman with these these two 2-1s two just by, like, getting in there for damage. And, ugh. Maybe we can mill him. Fair. So getting rid of the Leovold will also give our port more long-term value. Alright, what do we got? Four mana. Five mana? Jace? Jace. Well, that's terrible. Jace Bounce Thrag Tusk is a really annoying line that I'm really glad my opponent didn't see there. Oh, great. So we're probably just dead at this point. Uh, we've drawn a lot of blanks in a row. And we've given our opponent a few too many cards, and now they have a Jace. Like, if my opponent sees, like, Jace bounce Thragtusk and just, like, do that into Oblivion, like, I can't possibly beat that. Vedax, were you my Miracles opponent, right? Oh, him me. Deal. Yeah, okay, that's the only match I played today. Uh, yeah, that was a, a, a really good set of games. Um, I, I played a, a little bit of it, a little more rushed than I needed to, because, like, in the first part of the game, I just talked to the chat a whole bunch, uh, rather than, like, playing at a reasonable person speed. Uh, but, like, I wasn't getting that game three pretty much no matter what. Um... At what point do I just, like, scoop this one up? It's pretty soon. I'll give it a couple more draws, but... Uh, like, my opponent is fate sealing me now. And, like, that wasn't a fetch land or anything. Uh, so, Vedex, you, you played game one really well in our set. Uh, like... You, you stabilized on very, very narrow margins there. I accept this, realizing that it could be a trap, but my opponent is just going to, like, get it back somehow. Fatal push, sure. Yeah, um, so later today the replay will be posted um both like here and on youtube so like if you want to see things from my side of the uh yep okay if you want to see things from my side of the matchup uh you're welcome to uh 
Um, I think I'm dead here. Like, my opponent's board is amazing. They're fate sealing me. I get one redraw, but, like, how insane does that redraw have to be to just, like, beat Jace Bounce? I'll play it out, but I think I'm dead. Too bad the Daredevil wasn't legendary. Yes. I was supposed to part, part the forest. It doesn't particularly matter, because, like, my opponent is Death Ridge Shaman, so we're not cutting them off of green anyway. This guy's good. Alright, so my opponent bottomed. My opponent drains me. Which they shouldn't just, like, tap their death right all willy-nilly. Because I have, uh, the pirate bro in my deck. Okay. That is a great draw. Just gonna deed me. Pulse. That's unfortunate. So let's see if my opponent makes some mistakes with like how they play out their turn. That'd be wonderful. They did not. Although, arguably, they could have attacked him with a Veteran Explorer to make me lose one more Thopter. So I need one Thopter to block this Thrag Tusk. I need a second Thopter back to play around Jace Bounce. And I probably don't gain a lot by just attacking one Thopter at Jace. Because, like, my, my opponent will tick the Jace up to 13, and if I attack it down to 12, it's still, like, a lethal Jace activation. Uh, so I'm not going to attack in at all. Decay the rest in pieces rough, because that means like the Deathrite Shaman is just going to have me dead on its own, assuming my opponent has a couple more instants and sorceries, and then like I still have the Jace to deal with. Uh, so I'm basically hoping to draw a Recruiter. Um, do I trade for Veteran Explorer? Uh, I don't think so. Ugh. Rough. So, game two is really a loss to Jace. Like, there were, other, there were other things that hurt, but it was Jace that, like, put them sort of unquestionably ahead to the point where I couldn't really deal with it. Uh, sorry folks, my commentary isn't the best tonight. I'm I'm pretty wiped out, so I'm probably gonna do like one more match here and then then call it. Uh, I didn't sleep a lot this weekend. I I went to an anime convention um, and I presented six different panels. You know, each one of those panels is about an hour, and then most of the time when I wasn't presenting, I was sitting in on other panels or walking around. So like. All Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that was my life, and uh, while it was very, very fun, uh, I didn't really have a restful weekend. And then tonight was parent-teacher conference night, so that went two hours later than my normal work schedule, and I'm all sorts of discombobulated. Um, this decklist is the same decklist we ran in the previous league. Um, 
Darfleet hasn't really done anything too cool tonight. Like, it's temporarily taken my opponent off of Delirium and let me cantrip, and that's kind of neat, but, like, I'm not entirely convinced that this card is better than other options. Like, it's doing neat things, but, um, my results with it have been a little subpar. Um, like, I think just having the, the straight Fren wing mares in the deck might be better to just, like, consistently go on the tax plan. Um, and, like, in playing Direfleet Daredevil, like, I'm going down a rest in peace, and I feel like my sideboard is a little clunkier, because, like, I'm playing a bunch of Sanctum Prelates then that, um, to, like, improve the combo matchup because I removed the Bryn Wing Mares. Who would like to play first? Probably keeping this hand. Uh, let's see if I have any data on my opponent. Whispers. Can't type correctly. Uh, I found a place Grixis down there. I'll keep this. I'll fetch a basic planes on turn one, and then I get to curve like Mom into Thalia into like having Caracas back up. So even if my opponent has like one to two pieces of interaction for my initial hand, it's still pretty good. Alright, maybe my opponent is not on Grixis Delver specifically. I mean, it's possible they've changed decks entirely. Or that they're just leading on their weakest land. I don't think I want to get stifled this turn if my opponent has stifle. Yeah, it's gonna be a short stream today. I'm I'm gonna call it quits after this uh, this match. I'm I'm dying. I'm I'm really tired. I'm not playing particularly well either. But like, I I want to make sure that I am streaming every week during the times that I say that I'm going to be streaming. Like if I miss one from time to time, like so be it. But. I'm tired isn't a great excuse why I shouldn't stream. You know, I've got people who are, like, you know, donating to me or, like, subscribing to Twitch, and I want to make sure that I make their, their money worth it. Yummy. Alright.
There's a chance that my opponent is just on check pile. Kind of want to get Moon Man and just like really limit their ability to do anything. Like they'll have the death right for one colored mana of their choice per turn. I think that's pretty good. Like there, there are other lines available, but I think that's what I'm going with. My opponent will just probably him me again, and so it doesn't matter what I get. Um, but I kind of am lacking in the lands department myself, so I can't get something more mana intensive like a Stoneforge or a Direfleet Daredevil and get a ton of immediate benefit. And without the fourth plan, I'm not super comfortable just like going and grabbing something like P and K before I'm 100% sure that my opponent is on check pile. Like I think it's the most likely outcome at this point, but I could be wrong. Well. My opponent has a ton of mana up. So rather than like play the Magus into you know any number of removal spells, I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove the Death Rite so that I can poke in for three this turn. And like having this Magus in my moon creates this weird sub game where my opponent can't actually tap out out of fear of the Magus since like mom's here. Something like a lightning bolt isn't an out to it. Alright, so my opponent now has at least one real mana source in the post. Uh, Magus world. Alright, my opponent gets to him. And there's the confirmation that they are on check pile. I'm fine with that trade, I'm not going to tap the mom here. My opponent's pretty resource light at this point. And we are presenting lethal on the following turn if my opponent doesn't do anything. We have six from the sword, one from the stoneforge with mom backup still. And we get there. Alright, so that was game one versus check pile. We win. So game one win with Um I guess Mom is probably responsible for this win. Some some combination of Mom and Thalia. Alright. So, we're playing against check pile, so we're sort of bored in the attrition y side of our deck and see how that goes. Against check pile, I usually start by cutting my swords to plowshares and my revokers, since they're not reliable at shutting off things, and palace jailer is not necessarily amazing against a bunch of disposable bodies. So, boarding in PNK, Recruiter, Crusader, Prelate, Prelate, Resto, Rip, Rip, and then I have to make one more cut. I guess it could be a Direfleet Daredevil since I'm boarding in to rest in peace, but the card's pretty good if I don't have a rest in peace. It's also good with the resto that I'm bringing in. 
Maybe the second prelate is ambitious. Like, prelate's sort of an awkward card in the first place in this matchup. It's really good on three, but since your opponent also has, like, Decay, Bolt, Push, K Command, you know, Lily, maybe other Lily, um, Jace, like, Prelate isn't necessarily a hard lock. So I don't mind having one. I don't know that I want a second. I guess they get better in multiples and really good with Mom. But again, if I'm trying to test Dire Fleet Daredevil, I should lean towards keeping it in more often than not. Okay, uh, this is a hand where I have to fetch a plateau, probably. But it's a fine hand otherwise. Like, I have a lot of good card advantage in my hand, and I have three lands. Like, it's not a, it's not an insane vile start or anything like that, but this is very reasonable. My opponent doesn't play Deathrite Shaman, I will just waste them. But they did, so I won't. Prelate and Rip don't get along with Daredevil. Yeah, I mean, Daredevil's awkward on a number of levels. We've, we've talked about this a lot. I really hope my opponent doesn't just, like, play a Lily before I do anything. That'd be sad. Leovold, I accept. Leovold's great. Don't care about Leovold. Wow, my opponent forced this pitching the chase. That is great for me. So I'm kind of getting the read that my opponent's hand is kind of weak. They didn't shuffle with the ponder and they just played a land afterwards. Alright, um, we're just going to start playing out uncounterable dudes for the rest of the game. I'm just going to get the Mirror and Crusader here. Like, the, the only way I lose this game is if I randomly get aggroed out by, like, a combination of Leovold and Deathrite Shaman. So, like, my next turn can be, like, play Wasteland, play Mom, play Uncounterable Crusader, and then I have the board stabilized on a number of different levels, and and then afterwards, I'll go ahead and deploy P and K. Um, I will take this hit because I think I stabilized the board on the next turn, and I'll leave the recruiter around as a flicker was target. I also want to have some like padding for a diabolic edict.
Alright, so good news, I've stabilized the board. Bad news, my opponent has two death rates that might bleed me out. Um, I can ponder, but I don't think that's going to be better than just like P and K. P and K seems great. Uh, the only question after that is like, do I want to play a mom as well? I think I'm fine with that. So like now I'm in the position where I'm I'm very very comfortably winning the race. Um, there's only one instant or sorcery in the graveyard for my opponent's food. Um, and I have my opponent, and like there's only one creature in the graveyard. So I don't want to like lose a creature here. So I'm going to go ahead and just block and protect. Like this, this opens me up to removal in some capacity, but like my opponent had so many things to remove that like, what are they possibly going to do? Powerfully, Daredevil is not going to get the value I want against this board, which is unfortunate. So if I protect with a mom, give this pro black, attack in, that's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 damage if I like P and K and shoot twice. So I have my opponent dead on the next turn. I can play a Dire Fleet Daredevil just as a 2-1 with first strike, but I think I just want to like leave up double P and K shoot in case my opponent wraths with like a toxic deluge. My opponent tapped wrong there, forcing themselves to fetch one extra time. And then I think they fetch wrong again. Like, they should have fetched for a green source to eat my Thalia, but they didn't. Ancient Grudge on a Thopter. I see. Um, I guess I'll give you a card for that.
So my opponent now is in the territory where they can no longer fetch. They will die if they fetch. They will also die if they cast a Toxic Deluge. So that's all great for me. My opponent is effectively at 5 life because of the Thalia in my graveyard. So Mirror and Crusader plus Thopter alone is, is lethal. Or if one, if like Thopter dies, then Mirror and Crusader plus a P and, K, P and K activation is death. Alright. Oh, is it a deluge now? It's like they can deluge for two, go to four. I can shoot them to one. All right, that's annoying. So instead, I can shoot their Leovold and kill their Leovold with this. Now I'll get to Dire Fleet Daredevil and just get their Ancient Grudge out of the graveyard. Not the best Darfly Daredevil ever, folks. Uh, it's really arguable whether or not that was better than just like shutting off Snapcaster Toxic Deluge as a line. But I don't think my opponent's going to get to do that in the face of Double Port. I'm going to just port my opponent down twice here. Like they have something like a Snapcaster Mage, like so be it, they don't have any targets in the graveyard. Like, yeah, my opponent had a two mana spell there, but I still think it's better to just like force the issue right there. Card's great, folks. 
See if my opponent just has like a lightning bolt to make me sad though. Alright, we win one. So uh, I'm just going to write, we win with mana denial there. Like, it doesn't really matter what this creature is. Like, if it sticks and my opponent doesn't have an answer to it, I win. Um, like, part of the fact, like, it being Magus was very helpful, but, like, my opponent is at two life. And even though they have five cards in hand, like, if we just played Athalia and then just, like, port you, port you for the rest of the game, like, that's that's probably good enough as well. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty wiped. I'm not necessarily playing uh, well. Um, so I am going to go ahead and call it a night. Uh, again, my regular stream times are Mon Monday and Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. I started a little bit earlier tonight than usual, uh, but we'll have a nice regular size stream again on uh, Wednesday. Uh, thank you all for joining to me. Um, to, the, uh, to I Pronto, thank you very much for subscribing tonight. Um, and I will see you all again soon. Um, I've got a piece of content I'll be starting to edit tomorrow for Thraven University. Um, I have a guest article from uh, Travis Brown from when he uh, top aided the SCG event. Um, he just sent that to me this afternoon, so I'll get to work on editing that, and you should see that up later this week. Um, as soon as I can get it done, um, probably not any later than Friday. Uh, so thank you very much, and I'm going to see if I can dump you all into any other legacy stream.